I'm here with Jay Cross, who is the president of Related Hudson Yards. Jay, welcome. Thank you. Or you should be welcoming me. This is yeah, welcome to our site. Thank you. This is the nation's largest real estate project. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? It's amazing. Well, we're standing in the middle of phase one, which is only one half of the total project. And all around us, you see trains coming to and fro, servicing Long Island Railroad. And at the same time, you can see behind us a lot of structural steel guarding. We're laying in between the train tracks all of the foundations for over 8 million square feet of buildings to be built above the trains, all while the trains continue to run. Okay, I mean, that's a question right off the bat. How can you build these massive structures on top of a train yard? Well, the secret is we're not so much building it on top of the train yard as much as we're weaving our way through the train yard. So. Uh, we can only put uh, foundations in between the tracks, obviously, and the tracks determine where we can put them, and that may or may not be the right place for our buildings. So it gets a little complicated, but after years of really planning this, it's been basically a military operation. We come in in concert with the railroad, decide when we can move a rig in, when we can close tracks. There's 30 tracks in these yards, and they allow us to close four tracks at a time. So we can work on four tracks seven days a week. But some days, we have to do things where we, it can't be on the four tracks, and there we work in terms of you know, outages. They say you got three hours Thursday night, go, and then three hours later you got to be out of here. And so there's a lot of like dipping, doodling as we try to weave up steel through and in and around the trains. And so as you can see, the trains go into all that steel and they head into Penn Station. All right. So give us an idea of how many buildings you have that you're building here. And then also, when did you start and when do you hope to finish? So we're building five buildings uh, on top of the rail yards specifically. The first building is behind us here, which is 10 Hudson Yards. How big is that building? That building is uh, 52 stories tall. We're doing, uh, in this corner, a 70-story building. We're doing up in this corner uh, an 80-story building. And in the far corner, close to a 90-story building. And then in the middle, uh, about 10-story retail complex. Uh, with seven levels of retailing, topped by a three-level Lehman Marcus store. And then in between all the buildings, there's a six-acre public plaza that's, that knits them all together. Right. And, and when did you start? So we were selected in uh, May of 2008. Uh, and then the world fell apart in October. So uh, it actually worked to our advantage. We were able to do a lot of our preliminary work. We were able to complete our municipal approvals. Uh, and so by the time we started to come out of the recession in, in 10 and 11, we were gaining traction. We signed Coach, which is our first major tenant. Coach today are in that headquarters behind you, and they'll move from that building to this building. Uh, we started construction on that tower in uh, the late fall of 2011. Um, and then we started all this deck work about a year ago. And then when do you hope to have this completed? This this so part everything of it. you see under construction today will be finished by most of all, almost all of it will be finished by late 18. The two buildings in the corner will take until uh, the spring of 2019. And then beyond to the west, near the Hudson River, is another part of this project. Right. So as we go on the other side of 11th Avenue, all the way to the Hudson River, we have another six acres. Or sorry, another 13 acres to develop. Uh, there's eight more buildings to be done over there mostly residential, one commercial building. We would hope to be starting the deck over there in 17, and with a view that we would be complete, complete, the whole Western Yards finished by mid to early 2020s. Wow, so it's a 15-year you know, undertaking, essentially, then. Yeah, start it's 15 to years start to finish. What you have to look at is more like about 10 years of construction, right. uh, sort of four plus years here, and then five plus years on the other side. Covering these train um, yards, this rail yard, is has been done in other parts of Manhattan though, right? It's Park Avenue is the great example. Um, they closed over the yards uh, in the early part of the 20th century, and they left openings where the buildings are today. So Park Avenue was built, and the cross streets came across, and then you saw all these openings with the train tracks below, and the buildings gradually filled it in all in the 20s and 30s. And so today, you will go up and down Park Avenue, you have no idea the trains are running beneath it. Right. Um, you obviously hope that Hudson Yards will transform New York City. What, what will it be like? What do you hope that this will be for New York? Well, I think it's going to do a lot of things for New York. I mean, clearly what's happening in Chelsea to the south and, uh, and Hell's Kitchen to the north, uh, there's a lot of excitement on the west side of Manhattan. A lot of young people moving into this side of town. 
There's a lot of room for growth. It's becoming really the cultural center of Manhattan. And I think with all the commercial tenants moving over and the growth of the retail, there'll be more residential. And the idea that it's all mixed use and there's public space and public art and culture, uh, I think we're gonna shift the center of gravity. And one of the reasons why it'll shift is because this is gonna be new. And it's very rare you get an opportunity in a city that's as developed as Manhattan to really build something of scale all brand new. And I think so, you've got to think of it as a new neighborhood uh, in, in New York. And by virtue of being new, it's going to be very 21st century. I think it's going to be innovative. Uh, and as a place to live, work, and play, I think people are going to be really excited. What about people in the rest of the United States and around the world? Why should they care about this project? Well, I think what we're doing here is we're really advancing the cause of cities. And as it's been documented recently, over half the world's population now live in cities. It's really, uh, as a book title calls it, the triumph of the cities. That's where people go, that's where they get upward mobility, that's where the jobs are, that's where they can enhance their quality of life. And that's a big part of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to enhance the quality of life for New Yorkers. We're trying to create better accommodation, better retailing experiences, better dining experiences, better play experiences, and better office work environments. I think uh, all of that is transferable to the rest of the world, whether it be from a point of view of sustainability or resiliency or just quality of life issues. Uh, we hope to pioneer things here at Hudson Yards, which we can do at scale and then roll them out in lots of other cities. How much does this cost and how many people work here? Two questions. Uh, well, right now there's over a thousand workers a day on site. Uh, and as we start coming up out of the ground, so I would say a year from now, we'll have 6,000 workers a day on site. Uh, ultimately, the entire project will be in excess of $20 billion. $20 billion yeah. is what this costs. Well, you, you aim to get a return on that investment, I gather. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Better. Right. Um, how much um, accessibility is this going to be for all of New Yorkers? Um, is there going to be uh, housing, affordable housing here, for instance? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we just finished a building across the street just behind 10 Hudson Yards, which is a as an affordable component of the, that brown brick building is 100% affordable, which we just built. And then the next residential building we'll build in the corner of 30th, we'll have 100 affordable units in it. The public space, I should note, that it's publicly accessible, privately owned public space, so it's open to the public 24 seven virtually, in and around the buildings. Uh, and then I think the retail component is really gonna be the center of the neighborhood. So the combination of the number seven subway to the north of us, right on our site, and a connection to the High Line right here beside us. Uh, six million people here in the High Line already. I mean, I think this is gonna be the center of everything. What's it like to be in charge of the nation's largest construction project? Well, I would say on the one hand it's a little daunting and then sometimes I think I'm not really in charge. I'm just a traffic cop and I'm trying to keep everything moving in the right direction. It's very complex. There are an awful lot of constituent parts and constituent parties. Uh, and I think just trying to keep everything going forward every single day is, is a big, big challenge. It's a big logistical and sort of intellectual challenge, but it's, it's extremely exhilarating. Have you had any huge surprises doing this or any big pitfalls? What's, what have been some highs and lows? Uh, well, when we lose deals, that's always a low. Um, I, we haven't lost very many, I, I'm happy to say. Um, I don't think we've had any real big surprises, thank goodness. I mean, uh, I think when we were operating in and around the yards here, that was, there was a common perception that that was a very high-risk proposition. And so far, so good. We have a great working relationship with the railroad. We really have to work hand in glove with them every single day. Uh, and that's really uh, proving, to come to, uh, it's proving to be a very successful collaboration. You use one kind of uh, financing to help uh, build this uh, uh, to help build Hudson Yards was a, maybe a little controversial, the EB-5 program. Uh, are you still using that to secure monies? Yes, um, I would say we use virtually every kind of financing, um, just because the volume of dollars is so great that you really have to uh, go after every you source. You can't go to one bank. No, that's for sure. So you go to every bank, you go to non-banks, you go to sovereign wealth funds, you go to pension funds, you go to other equity investors. So I think you know virtually every type of real estate investor in the world is either we're going to them or they're coming to us. Uh, and EB-5 is one part of that. And, um, and it's been very successful for us. We just finished uh, phase one, which was financing the deck, everything you see here. And uh, we're starting phase two right now, and that'll finance the retail component. It'll be built on top of the deck. And then we have other investors and other uh, consortiums of banks making up the balance of the required financing. 
Now you work for the New York Jets, and uh, at that point in time, you were looking to put a stadium in That's here, right? right? Yeah. So um, it would have been right there on the Western Yards. No room for a stadium anymore. Well, the Western Yards is still available, so I guess so. <laughs> so, um, but that was sort of garnered your interest. How is it? How is your time at the Jets connected to working here? At the City well, Yards? Um, as you may recall, the the Jets Stadium was a fundamental part of New York's 2012 Olympic bid. And Stephen Ross, the chairman of Related, was very involved in that Olympic bid, along, along with Dan Doktroff, who was the yep. chairman of the bid. So during that whole bid process from 2000 to 2005, uh, we at the Jets worked hand in hand with Stephen and Dan. Dan then became deputy mayor. Stephen uh, then won the right to redevelop this site after the Olympic bid had failed. Um, and since I knew both of them, and I had some relatively in-depth knowledge of what goes on around here, uh, there was kind of a natural fit to join with them. Got it. Has anyone told you that you guys are completely out of your minds, that this project will never work? Do you ever hear stuff like that? Uh, they don't say it in quite those terms. I think a lot of people, I mean, I remember I met uh, a lawyer who represented the Giants back when we did the, the Jets-Giants joint venture for MetLife Stadium recently. And I hadn't seen him in probably four years. And he, and he was here on the site and he looked out and he said, you know, when you left the Jets to take that job, I thought you were crazy. But now that I look out and see all this happening, it's just amazing. And I think that sort of generally typifies, most people thought, great idea, but it you know, may or may not happen in our lifetime. And I think what has really surprised people is that we've got it off the ground. I think we've overcome all the skepticism. Uh, and now the momentum's really with us. We've got a great roster of corporate uh, partners, Coach, L'Oreal, SAP, um, Time Warner, Neiman Marcus, and lots more in the pipeline. And so every ser serious corporate partner or every single corporation that's looking to move comes to see us now. This is, this is real. It's very, very much going to happen in our lifetime. It still seems like people, the awareness is not quite there yet, which is maybe a good thing in a way. Yeah, that's actually on purpose. So projects like this that are so big, you've got to try and build as much as you can at once because no one wants to move into a construction site. So for us, the sort of number one goal initially was to get large corporate commitments. You know, Coach is three quarters of a million square feet, Time Warner is 1.6 million square feet. With those big commitments, you can then make the comparable commitment to the infrastructure. So phase one was to get as much office space leased as possible, leased or sold. Right. And that's a very sort of a, you know small market to play in. There's no reason to, to market broadly. Then phase two, which is what we're in right now, is to really lease up all the retail. And so we're putting a big push on our retail. And then next summer, 2016, we'll start selling the first residential buildings on site. And at that point, we shift very much into a more consumer-focused marketing campaign. So it's really by design, and we're about a year away from being sort of top of mind for everybody in New York. Jay Cross, president of Related Hudson Yards, thanks very much. Thanks, Andy, it was great to see you.